We go racing for one final time here at a fantastic circuit here at Circuito Karting Campios for the 10th and last well, final for the 2020 Rotax Max Challenge Winter Cup here in southern Spain. I think both myself and Sarah Moore have been feeling the heat a bit too much. I've been running up downstairs. She's had a mobile camera on her back. Uh, could I ask for um, both senior Rotax driver, 349, Sean Butcher, and, the ent and uh, also entrance to go to race control. 349, Sean Butcher, and entrance. Driver and entrance to race control immediately, please. Your grid is as follows for the DD2 Masters second final of the weekend, concluding uh, a dramatic 36 races over the last 48 hours. Slava Mimaransky, Rudy Champion, Andreas Schindler, Bruno Dos Santos, Christoph Adams, Franck Leverne, Frederick Backert, Klaus Parnett, Marco Winkler, Karl Klebot, Maxim Shaposhnikov, Tanyul Yildiz, who was giving everyone hugs and uh, handshakes on the grid as I walked past him and gave him one as well in, uh, in, uh, in not retaliation, that's not the right word there, is it? Um, in reciprocation, that's the word. And that's a, long, that's a long word after a heck of a weekend in the commentary box. I must be completely truthful. Um, but before we go racing... It's good to have you back in the box. I, mean, I, I think we've definitely been put through the ringer as you've got a very busy week in London coming up uh, when you land uh, at Stansted. Um, but we won't go into that. I think uh, it's probably going to be announced all over the news anyway with W Series. But um, the weekend. We said Senior Rotax was going to be the one that we were going to look for. We'll get the start underway and then I'll come to you in a second, Sarah. Lights out for 14 minutes as Andreas Schindler gets an absolutely blinding start and is trying to challenge Slava Mimaransky for the lead. He got past Champion up the hill. Bruno Dos Santos still in fourth place. I think that's Christoph Adams says, well, Champion has responded on Schindler through turn five, makes the move stick. And then we've got Christoph Adams and Franck Leverand. and this is incredibly close. There is someone right at the back end of the field. So we'll just concentrate on this for a couple of minutes. Uh, Rodrigo Pinilos is the one at the back end of the field uh, that I think is languishing a little bit further back, or it could be somebody else, but Slava Um I, I wished him good luck on the, uh, on the circuit, and uh, I said, good to see you back in action. And he's back to where he belongs normally when I see him at the front of the field. But he had a difficult season in 2019. Um, but Sarah, just... I think, I think we're both speechless. Especially after the senior Rotax. We've had a development where uh, 349 has now been called to race control. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about the weekend in general. I mean, just from the level up and down every single class we've had, it's been nothing short of amazing, is it? Exactly that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been great to watch. Uh, I've watched most of it from uh, from down uh, on the pre-grid downstairs. Um, yeah, there's been some fantastic battles out there. Um, some people, unfortunately, uh, didn't make it, but uh, you know that's racing. I'm sure they'll come back fighting. But yeah, it was it was great to watch. Um, like I say, some good battles. I think uh, I said at the start of the weekend after watching uh, practice and qualifying that the seniors would be the ones to watch, and they definitely delivered. In more than spades, I think, because Rudy Champion now has taken the lead from Slavomir Maransky. Uh, so Champion now in second, uh, now in first, takes the lead from the Polish driver. As it's getting a bit heated a little bit further down the order, there's been a change. I think that might be, um, I think that might be Marco Winkler that might have made up a position there. And uh, he's just in front of Klaus Parnett, who's in the 502. Some great racing. I think what the uh, I think what the DD2 Masters drivers want to do is give us a bit of a show, and that is definitely what's happening because the field is a lot more concertinaed uh, than it was in the first final, where Slavomir Maransky just romped away with the victory. We got 11 and a half minutes plus an additional lap. Maransky's dropped back a little bit. But he's taken 
two heat wins, pole position, a, a, a final one victory. And I think in many respects, even if Champion and Moransky uh, end up uh, equal on points, I think it may go in the way of Moransky because of his cumulative results on count back throughout the weekend. As Christoph Adam gets his... Uh, head down and he's just ahead of Franck Laveron. This is a battle for fifth position and just up ahead is Bruno Dos Santos. Then it's Baker, Finkler, Palmnet, uh, Palmnet, uh, Klebolt right on the back bumper of the 502. He's going to slip streaming and go back down towards the back, uh, the main straightaway. As Adams goes up, uh, well, Champion goes up the hill. Adams uh, now confirmed in sixth position and I think uh, I'll just keep an eye now. Carl Klebolt has not made the move Expected on Klaus Parnet as Jan Carlsen for the second race in succession pulls in into the pits. And that's a real shame for the KH Racing Team driver on the Birolart chassis uh, from Sweden. 10 minutes and 13 plus an additional lap left to go here. And there is still plenty of time. You can never count anybody out as up the inside of the uh, 553 of uh, Frederick Baker. It goes... Uh, Marco Winkler, and on the back part of them is uh, Karl Klebort, the backer, as he's more commonly known. As he goes up the inside, that was a perfect textbook manoeuvre. Just launched it, late breaks like he meant it, sent it up the inside after licking the stamp. And uh, great textbook manoeuvre there from Karl Klebort. And he's represented Team Belgium in the last two grand finals, both in Brazil and, bo and also in Sarno as of late last year. Both him and Christoph actually qualified for the grand finals against the, uh, uh, the, seven, the, the remaining 70 best Rotax DD2 Masters drivers from across the globe. And for those wondering at home with the grand finals, how do you enter? An entry for the grand finals is not about entering it is about success it is about merit being at the top of your game as we've had Klaus Parnett um, now overtake Frederick Baker it's there battling away that is over ninth place as Carl Clearbort is uh, trying to chase down Marco Winkler uh, there's a difference with the Rotax Grand Finals in terms of its colour its ambience its carnival like atmosphere hence why I call it the uh, Chaotic Carnival of Kala, especially when Henry Baudet is at the bottom of the, uh, the grandstand trying to get people to come down into, uh, you know, to get them all for the group photograph and seeing 360 people trying their level best to uh, see what they can do. That's a sight in itself. And you have to qualify. You have to go through a one-off event if they offer grand finals tickets or you have to go through a domestic or an international competition like we have with, uh, say, the Motorsport UK British Kart Championships, the Belgian Max Challenge, the BNL Karting Series, us at the Rotax Max Euro Trophy, uh, Rotax Max Challenge Germany, uh, amongst many others, Coronel Karting if you're in the Netherlands, uh, for instance. And there is so much Rotax action going on uh, South Africa's got underway. The UAE is, hot, is in the tail end of its season, heading to Alain Raceway a bit, at, a bit later on this month uh, for the penultimate round of the championship. So the gap now between Rudy Champion and Slavomir Moransky is now 0.864 of a second. Lap times between the pair, about a tenth adrift in favour of Champion. Uh, Moransky still holds the fastest lap of this race. A 1 minute 3.973. And uh, Andreas Schindler just puts in his fastest lap of the uh, race itself. A 1 minute, uh, minute 4.2 flat. Um, 1 minute 4.723 from Bruno Dos Santos who is about 1.9 seconds adrift of the German. Franck Leveron makes it, makes it three Frenchmen in the top five, rounding out the top five, and he is currently 
1.8 seconds or there or thereabouts behind uh, Bruno Dos Santos. We've had Tanyu Yildiz, unfortunately, I think, has called it a day. The German running on the Cosmic chassis, which I think I saw the FM Racing logos on the side. He's out of the running. Jan Carlsen went out. Uh, just to let people know on the uh, live stream at, on Facebook and YouTube, unfortunately, we will not be streaming the podium live, but hopefully we may... Uh, we might have some imagery to show on our social medias uh, in due course uh, after this weekend has, uh, has concluded. Ido Andrisani and Conrad Bayer, I'm looking forward to seeing you both in action a little bit later on as I see another entrance into the first round of the Euro Trophy at Karting Genk. The name of said driver, I've got to give a shout out to Piotrek and Max Sudersky. They've just entered. Uh, I think. Well, they've gone in. They've gone. They've, actually, looks like they're wanting to enter for Adria. That, you know, that's Genk. So, event two. This is event one, according to Eva. You can go onto the official Rotax Racing app via Apple, or um, you can also go via Google Play if you use an Android smartphone, or you can go to Rotax EMS.com forward slash capital R, capital M, capital E, capital C forward slash. That will put you through. And then you can uh, register your interest for that particular round, which starts in just 48 days' time. We have currently 44 entrants. And that's nearly the amount of days it's going to be between now and <laughs> that particular event. But it's been... A very busy weekend for both of us here, myself, uh, myself and Sarah Moore. Anthony Jordan, I'm looking forward to seeing you when we fly over to Belgium to Karting Genk in, 48, in uh, around 48 days' time. But now Moransky is closing. And he took nearly, he took seven hundredths out of Rudy Champion. So... Less than four minutes to go, plus an additional lap. Mm. Never say never. Moransky has come back from a difficult injury. He is closing, and I think that... Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely a nice spot there, Sarah. On uh, Moransky, was it? Yeah, yeah, his uh, bumper seems to be dragging on the floor. Ah, right. Okay. <laughs> So there might have been a little bit of an incident, or maybe even hitting a curb, because they can be a bit high. These carts are slung low to the ground uh, to optimise, uh, well, nigh on no. Yeah, I saw a little bit of a wobble from the left front of the cart there. But that could be to do with the headwind, maybe. Because they'll have a little bit of a flex in them, but if he's got a drop-down bumper, he's going to be... A rear bumper. Oh, a rear bumper. rear bumper. Oh, rear bumper. Okay, yes, it's yes, well spotted. That's starting to draw, drag a little bit on the tarmac. Uh, but I have seen it before because it's not, it's, it's still effectively in situ. I've seen Daniel Mahacek in Austrian 2018 battling Martin Henkel Mortensen. That is properly dragging on the floor there. Well spotted, Sarah. I thought I needed to go to Spec Savers. Obviously, my prescription needs to be a little bit stronger then. Um, but he's still, he's still keeping pace. He's still keeping pace. And what's more, he was nearly two tenths of a second quicker. So I think it's just a case of, he's gonna go for it. He's, he's got two minutes and 21 seconds. He is, I think, you know what this says to me? He's gone, stuff the rear bumper, I'm gonna go for it. He's come back from an injury, he's been heavily motivated. And I could see that, that adrenaline glint in his eye when I saw him and shook his hand and I said, good luck. Good to have you back. And you could ju I could see, because you can tell when someone's, when they've got the visor up, you can tell when they're smiling because the, the top part of their cheeks sort of, you, you, you get the little sort of like bridge of the nose, the little ridges there, the little sort of dimple, the sort of like um, cheek dimples there. And that was really good to see because I like the guy. He's a really good bloke. Doesn't speak that much English when I've spoken to him previously, but he's a hell of a racer. But no, it's flapping a bit forwards and backwards now. So, but it, again, he's quicker. He's eight one hundredths. He's about, what, that was four one hundredths quicker on that lap. So he's keeping pace. 
interesting. But I don't think it's severe enough for them to call it as a mechanical. If it was hanging and it was flailing like no tomorrow, if it's stuck there in that position for the rest of the race, as we go into the last uh, 70 seconds, plus an additional lap of the race weekend here, at the conclusion of the Road Sax Max Challenge Winter Cup here. As uh, Carl Clearbot looking very racy in the dying stages. He's right behind Marco Winkler. Uh, that is for seventh position. There's Rudy Champion. Slava Mimoransky is about three cart lengths behind. And I think we... I'm not too sure. We might be there or thereabouts, probably five to ten seconds. <coughs> With the pace they're running at the moment, I think they could still make it for possibly a pen, um, next time they cross the line. We'll go on to the penult uh, effectively the penultimate lap. So yeah, it's it's going to be close as uh, Christoph Adams gets the uh, one thrown up the inside of him by Frank Levan as Cla oh Marco Winkler and uh, Karl Clevort have a little bit of uh, wheel to wheel contact there. But here's Slava Mimoransky, he's about a car length and a half behind. The gap was 0 0.238. 0 0.186. Now we're on the penultimate lap. That bumper's dragging. That's really dragging now. And with these cambers, as we were talking about earlier on in the broadcast, Sarah, that's really showing that you go onto a camber heavy circuit like this, you have a problem with the rear bumper. It's going to start scraping. It's going to cause problems but not in uh, a mechanical sense because all it's done is attached to the chassis frame that's got the rear axle bolted to it and then you got, to, yeah, you can see that that is, that is moving backwards and forwards. It's insecure on the right hand side. So it's uh, gonna be quite interesting, but I think realistically what we're gonna have is that they'll take the checkered flag in the positions. They are, as I said, technical and, uh, and uh, sporting matters will be discussed post-race if required. So all race results have called, as called by myself are provisional. Final lap board for Rudy Champion from PKS Competition. Slava Mimonansky, I think, has now decided. Well, I've tried catching him up. I'm going to settle for second. It puts them tied on points. And if it goes the way of Mimonansky, I won't be surprised with the fact he's, won, he's taken pole position in qualifying practice. He's also win, won both heats yesterday as they go down the hill for the final time through into turn 10, heavy on the brakes into turn 11 where it's quite bumpy as they go left. And uh, Carl Clibor trying to uh, get past Christoph Adams and closes up quickly down towards turn 9 as the 5-10 on the triple 5 as they now go into turns 10 and 11 for the final time. It's the last lap of the event. What a whirlwind 72 hours it's been here at Campios. But the chequered flag will wave one final time in Andalusia. This time around, it's Rudy Champion. 5-4-4 from, uh, from PKS competition. Winning by 0.376 ahead of Slavomir Moransky. Andreas Schindler again finishes third which I think pretty much secures his place uh, as third on the rostrum, but unfortunately close but no cigar for the German from Iris competition. But either way, it doesn't really matter because we will see both Rudy Champion and Slava Mimaranski at some point this season, one of them with a free season entry for all four events, one with, a, with two event, uh, event uh, tickets of their uh, entries of their choice. So Rudy Champion wins the final race out of 36 here at Karting Campios. Slavomir Maransky takes second. Andreas Schindler finishes five point seconds adrift in third. Bruno Dos Santos rounds out the top four with Franck Leverne uh, making it three Frenchmen in the top five. A bit of sportsmanship there from the 502 of Klaus Parnett and Fred Frederick Bakert in the 553 who finished ninth and te uh, tenth and ninth respectively. Christoph Adams finished behind Frank Levern, Karl Klebold 7th, Marco Winkler in 8th, Rodrigo Pinilos in 11th, Maxim Shaposhnikov rounds out the 12th that finished with uh, unfortunately retirements for both Tanya Yildiz on lap 6, Jan Carlson on the very first lap with Ido Adrisani and Konrad Bayer not taking part in the race, they did not start it.